Today I want to talk about the message I have for anyone who wants to better themselves financially. And it doesn't matter how young you are or how early on you are in your journey, it also doesn't matter how late you are in your journey. And the reason I say that to start this video off is because a lot of times our financial journey and our financial situation as a whole gets stopped dead in its tracks purely because of what we think about ourselves being too young or too old. I always knew from the time I was a little kid that I wanted to make a lot of money. I knew that from the very beginning. But when you speak about your wants and when you speak about your dreams and where you want to be in life, people tell you things like, oh, well, you know, don't get your hopes up. Now, now, don't don't get too crazy now. You're not going to, you can't expect to make that much money at that young of an age. And that stuff, if you let it, can destroy any chance you have of getting there because it can be directly tied to your confidence. If you allow other people's words to denounce what you're going to achieve in life and you let that affect your confidence and your drive to get it, oh, you can kiss that dream goodbye. I decided I wasn't going to listen to them because I was like, they don't know what they're talking about. And, you know, I was right. And on the flip side of that, there's people who feel like they're, you know, late in their financial journey, like, man, you know, I'm, I'm 40, I'm 50, or, you know, it doesn't really matter. Like, you could be 30 and feel like it's too late. I remember when I first started my first emergency fund, I felt like I was starting too late. I was 21 years old. So wherever you are in your journey right now, whether it's early or late in your journey, either way, you need to understand that it's going to take time to better yourself financially. There's going to be some things you need to learn. There's going to be some systems you need to set in place. There's going to be a mindset that you have to obtain to get specifically where you want to get financially. If you're liking this video so far, leave me a like, hit the subscribe button. We're going to jump heavy into this topic right now. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Reggie Bryant. I'm the author of The Wealth Journey, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. When you want to take anything in life to the next level, you have to understand the number one thing, the number one constant in life is going to be time. You have to have time, intentionality, you have to have a plan, and you have to actually want it as bad as you say that you want it. It takes time to go from making 50 grand a year to 100 grand a year. It takes time to go from living with your parents to living on your own and killing it financially, being financially stable and all of those fun things. It takes time to go from living paycheck to paycheck to banking your paychecks but I'm not gonna tell you that any of your goals are unreasonable or unattainable because they're absolutely not. You can achieve everything. If someone's done it before, it is possible. The only thing is, it's gonna take some time. And you know, you might not reach the goal in six months, but you might reach it in, you know, four or five years, maybe even less than that. You just can't let anyone tell you that you can't achieve that goal because if you let them do that, then their words have a direct impact on where you will go in life. And I am not leaving my fate up to anybody. So that's the first thing to keep in mind because you know, you might want to save up your first $20,000, $30,000, but that ain't going to happen in one day. You might want to get out of debt right now, but that's not going to happen next week. So what I'm saying is, if we know that these things are going to take time, we need to lay out an action plan for ourselves and not deviate from it. And we're not talking about a wish list of what you would like to have. We're not going to sit here and talk about how you would like to be on a yacht. You would like to go out of the country for two months and not have to even look at your bank account. And we're not going to talk about how you want to get married and have the most expensive budget there is and have all these people there and cater to every single person who's in the room. And we're just not here to talk about how you wish you were getting 10 grand a month in passive income. That's not what we're here to talk about. These are things that we wish would happen. We're going to talk about how we're going to make these dreams come true. And the way you do that is you think about what you would like to have and then think about what you would need monetarily to get that. And then we're going to look at where you are right now versus where you will be in the future to get that result. So for example, I'll give you a goal that I had about five years ago. I set out a five-year plan. I was making 60 grand at the time. I was like, I want to be making double this in about four or five years. Wasn't sure how I was going to do it, but I had an idea that it had something to do with the promotion at work. But I also had an entrepreneurial spirit, so I also knew I was like, well, I could also diversify my income and make some extra income on the side as well. But I knew that I wanted to double what I was making then because I knew then I was comfortable. I had a nice place. I was living by myself. I didn't really have to rely on anybody for anything. And my bank account was looking fairly good. But I knew if I had double the money I had then and I kept my expenses the exact same, I would be on top of the world. 
So that was what I wanted to achieve. I didn't want to ever have to go home worrying, oh my gosh, if I lose my job, if the company shuts down, if, if this one stream of income gets cut, I'm toast. I didn't want to go around thinking that. So I knew if I made double that, I would never be worrying about that. So I would want you to make goals for yourself as well. And you're also going to want to hold yourself accountable. And that's something that I've had to do a lot because you have to think about this. And it goes with everything in life, not just money. If you want to get into the best shape of your life, but you're eating Cheetos every night, you know what I'm saying? Eating cakes and ice cream every night, drinking sodas, and then you look in the mirror and then see that you're not where you want to be, you can't blame anybody but yourself because that mirror reflects exactly what your standard is. And what acts as a mirror in this case is your bank account. What are you spending your money on? Because if you want to better yourself financially, you have to have some type of financial discipline. I'm not saying to never have a good time. I'm, never, I'm not saying to never go out. I'm not saying to not go out to eat or anything like that. And I'm definitely not telling you to cut the Starbucks coffee. I would never tell you to do that because that ain't going to really impact your finances at all. But I am going to tell you, if you don't even track where your money's going, I am going to tell you that if you just swipe, 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 and you buy things that you want just because you're making good money and you can afford it, sure, we can afford a lot of things. But is it helping you get towards your goal or is it pushing you further and further away from your goal? That's what I want you to ask yourself with every move you make financially. So if you write down how much you have in your savings account, if you write down how much you have in debt and how much money you want to have in your savings account and you know that you want to be debt free by this date, cool, you have goals. If you're making 40 grand right now and you want to be making 80, write down a plan. How am I going to get there? How hungry am I to get it and how bad do I want it? And what are my action steps to get there? And here's something to think about that I didn't think about. Um, when I was younger, about 21, 22, I was so focused on accumulation that I didn't think about how my money could spread over the years and literally multiply itself over the years. I thought in a very linear way about money. I thought, okay, I just keep stacking onto these savings and we're good. Okay, I just keep paying down my debt and we're good. I didn't think so much about investing into assets, which if you want to better yourself financially, that is something you will need to do. So if you want to better yourself financially, it will behoove you to learn about things like the stock market and index funds. And if you have a full-time job, you're already invested in it if you have a 401k. So if you trust your retirement with that, you should do your own research on the side to look at how you could invest individually on your own accord and how you can make that money grow. Because there's companies out there, and I'll name a few of them, Apple, Google, Microsoft, NVIDIA, American Express, Visa, Nike, Costco, Target. I just named a bunch of them. They can give you a very high return year over year as long as you get into the right prices. And if you just did a little bit of research, not on all of them, you only need a few companies. Me, personally, I'm only invested in six different companies. But if you do a little bit of research on a few companies and you invest your money into them little by little, you don't got, if you don't have that much money right now, you can do 100 a month. If you don't have enough money for a full share of that stock, you can get a partial share. And it's still going to act like you have a full share. It's still going to go up in whatever percentage the full share goes up by. And that's how we have to think about it. We can't think of it in terms of, oh, this is risky because people are going to tell you, oh, well, stocks are risky. OK, well, do you have a 401k? They're probably going to tell you they do have a 401k. They might even brag about how much they have in it. But they got to realize that is literally invested in the stock market. It's invested in mutual funds, which have stocks and bonds inside of them. I promise you. So we have to change the narrative and we have to change the way we think about what it means to have money. And while we're at it, while we're learning about investing in stocks, while we're learning about how we can do more to add more savings, and by the way, if you wanna add more savings, just automate your savings. If you don't know how to do that, check out my video on how to double your savings. And if you like this video and you really want to get better with getting good at money, hit the link in my description and you will get emails from me personally giving you a few steps along the way. Just every week you'll get emails from me. You'll be able to be a part of my community of people who are growing themselves financially, and that community is growing every single day. But while we're at it, you know, it takes a lot. And this, and this stuff is not always gonna be fun. It's not, you know, butterflies and rainbows and, you know, ice cream cones. This is real life. And you know, the earlier you do this, the better it's gonna be, the better off you're gonna be. There's financial books that I recommend that you read. And my book is one of them, not because it's just my book, but because it's going to give you insight that I wish I had when I first got started. And it can even teach you a lot of things that you didn't really know about finances or how to manage them, even if you've been you know, on your journey for a while. 
But anyway, my book is called The Wealth Journey. Check it out. It's up here. And it shows you step by step how to build wealth from scratch. It even goes deeper. It shows you how to earn more money, how to get high paying jobs. I'm not just talking about any high paying job. I'm talking about literal six figure jobs, how to interview the whole nine. I put so much into that book and it's a fairly quick read. It's 172 pages. So if you wanted, you could read it in a weekend. But anyways, I'm getting off my soapbox. There's so many books that you could read. Like if you just Google search popular personal finance books, you would find a ton of good ones. And I recommend you read all of them because you're going to read some things that you agree with and some things that you disagree with. You're going to have some things that can help you a lot and some things that are helpful to know, but they might not pertain to you right now. And that's OK. But the whole point is to expand your mind and to understand more about personal finance. And in addition to all that, you also want to live below your means. So as your income increases, you put more of it into your savings, you put more of it into your investments. And if you're really about it, if you really, really want to improve your finances and get further along, you can build other streams of income on top of it. So for me, it was, you know, my job. And then I was given drum lessons on the side because I was in drum line in college and in high school. And I felt that I have more than what it takes to teach, you know, people who are aspiring to be on their drum line in their high school or in their college how to get there because I did it myself. I played at a ton of college games and I played at an NFL game too. I played at a Carolina Panthers game. It was the most memorable experience of my life. But we have to understand that this whole process is a journey. It's not gonna happen overnight, but it can happen a lot quicker than you think. I always tell everyone, give yourself five years and see how far you get and make progress with everything that you do. And set a plan and try not to deviate. We're human, so we are gonna deviate from here and there. But try to deviate as little as possible and you will more than reach your goals. But anyway, that is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.